and welcome to this episode of the Pilgrim Story Hour. My name is Moni Dujeji and today's episode is being brought to you from the lovely Champlain Lookout that is in Ottawa, Canada. And as I'm walking, you'll probably hear my feet crunching the leaves underneath, just giving you a taste of fall and the lovely city that I'm in today. And what I would like to speak about is making the choice to walk alone as a pilgrim. That is probably one of the greatest fears that pilgrims have, and that is to make the decision to walk alone. And I understand that fear because it was something that I walked with when I chose to walk my first Camino alone. But did you know that the Camino is called the Way of the Sword? It is the place where you get to battle your fears and find your courage. So what greater opportunity than your own pilgrimage to actually face those fears and make peace with them. And really all you have to do before you begin walking is just set the intention that you do want to make peace with those fears and allow the Camino to bring you the experiences to actually help you do that and take care of the rest for you. Now, one of the main reasons that I chose to walk my first Camino alone was to specifically face that fear of walking alone that I just mentioned. And I was also um, at a place in my life where I was trying to change the story that I had been told about the world. You know, that the world is a dangerous place. You can't trust people. Everyone is out to try and, and get you. And if you're walking alone or if you're traveling alone, they're going to use every opportunity to steal from you or to take advantage of you in every way. And I was really trying to change that story into one that said, the world is a place of possibility. The world is a place of wonder. And I want to walk in the world in curiosity, not in fear, but in curiosity and openness, not leaving behind reason and logic, but balancing it a little bit more with walking with a bit of more of an open heart. I was also on my first pilgrimage trying to walk without a great deal of plans, learning to trust my intuition and my own inner yellow arrows to guide the way, and learning to pay attention to what was happening around me or to any synchronicities or omens that appeared in my path and having the courage to actually act on them, even when they didn't make logical sense to my mind and maybe if they even took me off the path a little bit. So that's really why I was on the Camino. That's really why I wanted to walk alone. And when I started walking from Rome to Jerusalem, it was with the intention of continuing alone and really continuing to deepen that practice I was telling you about and my confidence in being alone and in being guided. But when Alberto came with me and it felt also like a, a positive omen to have him with me, um, in the beginning I resisted, but then as happens among all pilgrims, you know, you get comfortable, you start enjoying the other person's company, it's nice to have someone to talk to and to share all the experiences with. And so I became very comfortable and very easy having him with me. Now we had been walking for about three months and had gotten into a nice comfortable rhythm of being together. And we had finished walking in Italy and had just entered Croatia. Now Croatia was a completely unknown uh, land to me. I knew very little about it. I only knew that they had just come out of a civil war, but we were now walking into a situation where we didn't know the culture, didn't know the language, didn't know the people. And so with a certain amount of you know trepidation as you would with any new situation that you're not comfortable with. So we walked our first couple of days and we didn't have very many problems, it was good. By the third day though, after a really severe day of heavy, heavy rainfall, I ended up getting terrible blisters. And we were fortunate enough to finally, I hobbled into the town that we were in and found um, a priest who invited us into his home and encouraged us to stay for as long as we wanted, which to me was a huge gift, which meant I could stay and recover from my blisters. So I had just taken a shower, he had invited us to a hot meal, I was just settling in my bed, I was threading my blisters, and Alberto walks in, and he has a bit of a kind of an anxious look on his face. And I'm saying, what's wrong, what's up? And he's going, so how are your feet? I said, well, you know, you can see, I, I need at least a day or two to recover. And he says to me, are, are you sure? I mean, are you sure you can't maybe start walking tomorrow if we walk slowly? 
And I said to him, no, I, I really do need a day or two to recover so that I can continue strong and healthy. And he just paused for a little while and then said, you know, um, I've been getting kind of signs, omens myself, that I need to get to a town called Medjugorje, which is in Bosnia, by the 25th of the month. Now, Medjugorje, for those who don't know, is a place of Marian apparitions. And it's an, at, it was, we were actually planning to go to Medjugorje, but it was a little bit out of our way. But he said to me he really felt it important to continue walking alone ahead of me and that he would only be a day or two ahead and we would meet up in Medjugorje. You know, I panicked. It's funny because, you know, I started walking alone. I had trained myself to walk alone. But in the moment that he said he wanted to go ahead alone, I just all of a sudden felt very scared. What was I going to do? A woman walking alone. So all the fears that I thought I had overcome came just rushing back to the forefront. But then I realized after the initial kind of panic and, you know, a little bit of anxiety uh, wove through me, I realized that we're not really walking together. We are two individuals on their own journeys who just happen to be sharing a path. And that is something that I needed to remind myself more than once on the Camino. I'm not really walking with anyone, I'm just sharing the journey. And to honor the journey of someone else is the greatest gift that you can offer them and yourself. And so once I understood that, even though I was still nervous, I said to him, you know what, I, you're right, you absolutely need to continue walking your own path. And I'm only a day or two behind you, so you go ahead and I'll catch up with you. And he didn't have a phone. I had a cell phone. He said, listen, I will call you as soon as I get the opportunity. And definitely when I get to Medjugorje, I'll find a way to contact you. And that was it. We said our, he said goodbye the next morning and he walked away. And you know, obviously I wished him well. I sent all of my angels to walk with him and to help him find his way. And I only spent one extra night at that place and continued on my path the next day. Now it's funny, I was nervous again on the road and I started walking and the whole day I kept doing one of these, looking over my shoulders, you know, because I always expected to find him there. And it was very, odd not having my companion behind me or saying to me as he would normally do in his lovely Spanish accent saying Moni be careful because he was always worried that I wasn't paying attention to the road and that there would be a car coming along to hit me so it was it felt lonely especially on that first day it felt very lonely that I was alone with my thoughts a lot more than when we were together but I felt a surge of my confidence beginning to come back again and the first night I stayed in the home of a friend of the priest where I had stayed the first night. And the, th the third night I ended up um, staying at a monastery. I arrived at this monastery because they said to me, you definitely want to go there. So I arrived. And when I arrived, I felt like I was the prodigal daughter just returning. Apparently Alberto had stayed there on his first day. And he told them that I would be walking behind him and they told him that I was suffering with blisters. And so when I arrived, they immediately um, embraced me and encouraged me to stay as long as I needed, saying, you know, you're gonna have a long, hard journey ahead of you and you need to stay and recover as long as you need. You know, when a pilgrim is given a warm bed, a hot meal, hot shower, fresh sheets, you're gonna say yes. And so I, I said, yes, thank you. And I stayed and I slept in and I allowed them to cook my meals and to look after me and it all felt so good um, for the first day, second day, but by then, you know, it was, the guilt was setting in because Alberto is now at least a couple of days ahead of me and I didn't want to be separated that long from him. And so I enjoyed my time in Karlobag and I eventually said to the superior of the monastery, you know, thank you so much, um, but I really do have to continue on my journey. And so the morning that I was about to leave, he brought me into his office and he pulled out a map and he said to me, these are the places where you want to be staying. And he put big X's beyond the, on, the, on the towns and on the locations where he said he has friends there. And he said, you avoid these areas because there's still a little bit of conflict going on, but continue here. And then he pulled out a letter. And the letter was written in Croatian on letterhead. 
of the monastery and it was signed by him. And he explained to me that this was a letter of introduction that I could show to anyone whenever I needed help. And he goes, many people in this region already know who he is. And so he goes, you are sure to get the help that you need. All you have to do is ask. And then he gave me his phone number and said, call me whatever you need, anything. And as uh, the tears were rolling down my face in, in gratitude, um, he just stood there and he said a small prayer. He blessed me on my journey and just reminded me that I am not walking alone on this great pilgrimage that I was on. That experience reassured me more than words can say that when you have the courage to just take one step at a time, face the fears that you need to face, walk with an open heart, begin to trust that you are supported and carried in your journey and that all that you need will come to you if you have the courage to do that, it would be proven over and again. I would have many more experiences, one of them where I was actually quite ill and would need to have surgery. I'm not going to tell the story here. I encourage you to watch the video called Spiritual Beliefs where I tell the story in length. But that experience and so many more during my time alone would just simply reinforce my confidence in my ability to continue walking all the way alone to Jerusalem if I had to. I ended up being separated from Alberto for 40 days. And when I finally did meet up with him in Medjugorje, he told me that those 40 days apart were the most powerful experiences for him on his journey as well. And we both agreed that this time alone served our spiritual journeys, they served our emotional journeys and our mental journeys. We needed that time apart to continue growing as individuals who are happening to be sharing that path together. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you are someone, if you're a pilgrim right now who's walking or you are thinking about going on pilgrimage, I encourage you to consider just spending a little bit of time alone. If you're going with another person or in a group, ask them to just walk ahead of you. Keep them in eyesight, but walk alone for just a little bit by yourself. Be with your own thoughts. If you have the courage a little bit more, ask them to maybe meet you at the next town or at the next bar, the next albergue and maybe even eventually just say, I'll see you in the cathedral in Santiago. There is so much to be gained in your own personal journey as a life pilgrim, if you have the courage to take those steps alone. Thank you again for watching. Please tune in next week for another episode of the Pilgrim Story Hour. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and feel free to share it. Buen Camino everyone and have a great day. To learn more about my pilgrimages, whether on the Camino or walking from Rome to Jerusalem, I encourage you to visit my website, www.walkingforpeace.com. There you're going to find lots of pictures, some short stories, anecdotes, uh, the maps with a daily route where I walked with Alberto, where we stayed, how many kilometers a day, along with the award-winning memoir of our journey called Walking for Peace and Inner Journey. Thanks again for tuning in and have a great day.